Hey everyone, welcome to Rewind Video. I'm Bob. I'm Rob. And we love movies. Good ones, bad ones, old ones, new ones, big movies, small movies. Rob, there are a lot of movies on our shelves that I would have loved to have seen when they debuted in theaters. Yeah, yeah you could have been there. Alas, without a time machine, most of these films I only see on my TV at home. I'm not building a time machine. I Instead, I come to a Rewind Video where you and I are in charge of choosing the movies that go onto the staff recommendation shelf. Each time we choose a selection of films, we adhere to a theme. And this week's theme is, as you probably guessed, time travel. Going back in time or forward in time. Or forward in time. I got to tell you, I was, I was looking forward to this theme and I enjoyed it. I, I really did. But man, time travel movies break my fucking brain. I, <laughs> I feel like I am a stupider person after uh, going through all these films. Yeah. And oh. It's hard to wrap your head around something like time travel, I think, because it's not really possible. <laughs> right, 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 right. And it doesn't yes. exist. Yeah. So you have to make up rules to make it seem like it does. And no time travel movie is just going to be, I've built a time machine. I'm just going to go back in time. And I'm going to live there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Instead, there's all sorts of crazy shit that has to happen, hijinks, time crimes, things like yeah, that. that I, I feel like that. I feel that's an untapped market. There <laughs> probably is a good book about that. Yeah. Uh, time travel is very appealing, though, because like having the ability to, to predict the future or change the past and in service to your present self is something that like it's hard to not be intrigued by and, and, and get drawn in by. It's intriguing and it, it does draw you in. I I'm more and more, as I get older, feeling reluctant to find it as appealing as I once did. <laughs> I, think, I think especially with some of the movies that we're bringing to the table this week, uh, yeah, it just seems like a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess it depends what kind of time travel you're talking about, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. And some people have, have brought up like, oh, would you ever like go back and relive your past? Um, and 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 if it means like going back to being a teenager again, like no, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. But there is some appeal to like you know do something for if it was in service to my current self. Yeah, I would I would totally be into that maybe. But it never it never works out as planned. Yeah. Right. No. No. no never does. <laughs> I mean, no story I've ever seen uh-uh. or heard of. Do you remember what the first time machine in a movie? was that you were introduced for me it was the delorean that I was would, my first yeah, introduction to, to a time machine yeah um but there's no shortage of different types of time machines we're going to talk about a few of them yeah. this week um but i want to touch quickly on just the the logic associated with time travel um it, it's handled in all sorts of different ways in in storytelling uh, and i'm not bringing to the to the shelf uh, Avengers Endgame but I think that it was inter- I want to give it some credit for trying to level set on the realities of time travel okay. um, and dispute a lot of the things that we've come to kind of assume are true about time travel so the movie suggests that if you go into the past the past becomes your future and your former present becomes the past which now can't be changed by your f- <clears throat> new future. And I don't know what you just said. I, right, right. I had to rewatch this scene from the movie a couple <laughs> times in order to wrap my brain around it, and I still don't know that I have. But is that just like some way to like explain the continuity of those movies? Well, yeah. You know, I think that obviously they're making this point to advance the plot of this movie, which is you know involves multiple timelines. But I don't know that. I've actually never seen. Oh, okay. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's true. It does. And but you know, in making this point, they literally in the movie make reference to films like The Terminator, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And yeah. Back to the Future as being like fatally flawed in how time travel is treated, uh, just because this idea of going back in time to make a change that's going to affect the future is is what they're all built on. And I don't know, yeah. I, you know, I, <laughs> like I I think that they're they're making a compelling case at least in this movie, and everyone buys into it, but. We haven't invented time travel yet, so yeah. Who I mean, who's, who's to say how it really works? Time is a very, very delicate thing, right? And uh, we certainly respect our customers' time, uh, right. which will be evident in the the run times of our movies today. Well, we also have rental windows. You have to return your movies on time, and yes. we, we expect people to be beholden to uh, rules around time. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there there are theories, and actually, it's proven that the the past, the present, and the future are all really the same thing. 
But that doesn't excuse returning your videos late. No, nope. I just want to point that out. It doesn't. It doesn't. And uh, three strikes, yeah. three, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got one question before we get into our, our picks this week. Yes. If, if we had a time travel machine in the back room here at Rewind Video. It would be the popcorn machine. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> that was not, that was no. not it, but I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, would you rather travel to the past or the future? Wow. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, probably the past, just because it's like it's a known, a known thing. Uh, maybe I'm not as adventurous. I, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of hope for the future. <laughs> right, 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 right. I especially when you talk about something like time travel, because you could just pop into something that, like, you, you know, I guess how do you know where you're going? At least, at least if you're going to the past, you can be like, listen, I know that like at this point in Kansas or whatever, I can land here. And it won't be like a, a bomb site, you know. Right. In right. the future, you have no idea. There, you could be land right in the middle of a hurricane or something. Or like a void where the earth used to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I think when I was young, I used to be eager to travel to the future because it was like, what are, what's it going to look like? What sort of crazy shit are we going to have? But now I'm like, definitely the past. I, yeah. know, I know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, interesting. Well, let's not belabor the point any longer. I'm eager to talk about your first movie, so take us take us to wherever you're going. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, start us off with a movie from 1998 called Run Lola Run. Mm. This is a German time loop crime thriller from. Uh, it was 1998 in Germany. I think it came to the states in '99. Yeah. Uh, this is written and directed by Tom uh, Tickfer, who's a, a German writer director. He wrote and directed um, Perfume, yes, which is a movie you previously brought to the the table. Right? Does anybody get eaten in Run Lola Run? <laughs> not uh, not on screen. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the back of the box. After after a botched money delivery, Lola has 20 minutes to come up with 100,000 Deutschmarks. It's a provocative pitch. Yeah, and also a very short movie, it sounds like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tagline, every second of every day you're faced with a decision that can change your life. Decisions I don't think have a lot to do with it. No. But, you know, we can that maybe that maybe that's a, a philosophical point that we can get into. <laughs> uh, did you know that this was this this was uh, remade? Re- wait, this is a remake or it was this, remade? This was sen- remade no. in twenty twenty two. Uh it's a Hindi language official remake. Uh, it's called really? Loop Lapetta. Did not know that. I look. I I didn't. I didn't watch it. I didn't do too much research into it. The pro, the promo image looks like it's kind of more of a comedy. But here's <laughs> the thing: it's two hours and eleven minutes, which is like, Ooh. what are they? What is like? I, what are they doing? Come on, it's not yeah. the same movie. This movie is eighty one minutes. Great length. Uh, this movie goes hard and fast. Yes. It's basically an eighty minute music video. There's a lot of running. There is As a lot of running. The title There's suggests plenty of running, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, music videos had gone uh, through the process of like turning into movies before this, and then this was the age of music videos or movies turning back into music videos, and there is this symbiotic relationship. And also, the the music here is like it's it's more of a score than a soundtrack, but it's very electronic heavy, uh, very steady beat throughout the whole movie. It's kind of a ticking clock. And actually, the music is by Tickfer and um, uh, Franca Potenta is on a couple of songs as well. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's 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 original music made for the movie. Oh, um, nice. You know, techno back mm-hmm. in back in the nineties. <laughs> uh, the thing about this movie is Lola and the the other characters in the in this world they're not they're not time traveling. The audience is time traveling. We yes. are time traveling. Uh, for those who hasn't haven't seen it, Lola keeps failing to resolve this situation in a way that like <laughs> her and her boyfriend both live through it. Uh, so the movie keeps looping us back to the beginning, and she gets to try it again. Yeah, uh, but it's not really like a it's not like a what could have been type of story. Uh, Sliding Doors came out in 1998, same year, um, yeah. which is like, hey, this is what could have happened, and we don't. This isn't really what's going on. We're kind of just like taking a, us back to the beginning and, and giving Lola another shot at the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, just creating different timelines until we find one that we like. You, you know, you mentioned that this feels music video-esque, and I agree. Yeah. But it also feels like a video game. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just there's like... That, there's parts of it that are straight up video <clears throat> game. Like, yeah. Uh, it's like, it's sort of like the ultimate student film concept. Yeah. That's been executed to like a, 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 a perfection. Mm-hmm. But 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 the characters don't really don't they don't realize that they're jumping back in time and trying this over again. They don't have any knowledge of the future. They don't get to like change their decisions and like try something else. They have no memory of any of this happening. Right. Kind of the 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 small changes in the world around Lola and everybody else is what really changes changes the way the situation resolves. Yeah. You know, tiny bits of information get through. Kind of like uh, everything everywhere, where where all of a sudden Lola knows how to use the gun in a way that she didn't know before. Yeah. Um, but I think that to me is more of like a multiversal passing of information and a connection. I don't think it's like her remembering anything that happened before. But also we we get these little snippets, those little snapshots into the future snippets that are kind of transitions and in, in scenes, and those are little time travels unto themselves as well. They are. They are. That's you a good know, point. They're often humorous. They're <laughs> sometimes they're <laughs> tragic and humorous. Yeah. Um, but these these random chance occurrences turn into a string of events that can like completely upend somebody's life or lead to great things or horrible things can lead to the best things in these these people's lives and you can see all of this happen in what like a 10 second little like photo clip. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty outstanding. But there's also you can <laughs> you can also use those to show people who are just completely helpless in the universe. <laughs> um, there's that woman who's pushing the baby in the stroller and we get to see her future changed dramatically. Her uh, connection to Lola is barely changing. Right. And then all of a sudden her life is swinging in these wild <laughs> directions. Like based on the way the wind is blowing, this woman is like either a millionaire or a homeless crackhead. <laughs> like yep. it's just – it's crazy. But then there's uh, – what's that guy? Mr. Myers and the BMW who like apparently across the entire multiverse forever and all time, they will be getting in that car accident, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's what it seems. <laughs> So yeah, I love the I love the perspective that this has on time travel. I think it's uh, the filmmaking really captures time and time travel in a really cool way. It's it's a fast movie, it's a rush, it's uh, super rad, and so I'm putting it on the shelf for time travel. I remember seeing this shortly after it came out, probably right around the year 2000, and it definitely made an impression on me. I think it was per, it, it, very relevant and true to the time that it was made. Um, It didn't hold up for me as well on a rewatch. And I was trying to determine, was that because I kind of knew how it was going to play out or did it feel just not as relevant now as it did then? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think that it's still definitely worth a watch if you've never seen it because it's an experience. I think in in 1999, 2000, it was something that, we had almost never seen before. We uh-huh. hadn't really seen anything quite like that. Oh yeah, you're right. And, and so it doesn't come to come across quite as like fresh. Yeah, and there have been no shortage of time loop movies that have come since. And so yeah, it doesn't feel as original of, of a formula, but it very much was at the time. Yeah, it doesn't lean on the time loop. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't it, it's. It doesn't even kind of really care about that. It's just no. kind of like, isn't this a cool thing, to, cool way to make this movie, I think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it doesn't really care that much about why the time loop's happening or what is happening even. Yeah, yeah. And it's better for it. It, yeah. it would be a longer, more tedious movie, I think, if it was concerned with those things. And no, it doesn't, it doesn't, need, doesn't to need to be any longer than it, than it already is. Yeah. Well, great pick. I uh, it, it, I did enjoy going back to it. It's uh, it's a fun one. So I hope our customers give it a shot. Totally. Well, I'm going to take us ahead to 2014. We're going into the future, but mm. future as it relates to Lolo, Lolo, Run, Lolo, Run, the past for us. <laughs> <laughs> so the first 2014. Right, right. The first 2014. Um, and my movie is uh, Predestination. So back of the box synopsis. Based on the short story All You Zombies by Robert A. Heinlein, Predestination chronicles the life of a temporal agent played by Ethan Hawke, sent on an intricate series of time travel journeys designed to ensure the continuation of his law enforcement career. Now on his final assignment, the agent must recruit his younger self while pursuing the one criminal 
that has eluded him throughout time. Tagline, to save the future, he must reshape the past. That's a fucking horrible tagline. <laughs> right. That, yeah. it, it, put that on any time travel movie. It's every time, time travel every movie. Every time yeah. travel movie. It's lame. horrible. It's lame. It is. Um, now, I'm a big fan of Ethan Hawke. Uh, I think he's one of the more interesting actors working today. Uh, this is one of his films that I hadn't seen. Uh, so I was excited to finally have a reason to watch it. Uh, in addition to Ethan Hawke, we also get Sarah Snook, who most people will recognize from uh, her role in the show Succession. Uh, she's pretty remarkable as a character who has transitioned to a man in this movie. In fact, when we're first introduced to her character in this in this film, I didn't realize that it was a character played by a woman. I was, I yeah. was like, I, I know this actor. Who is it? And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Back of the Box sums this up to a degree, but I definitely thought I was getting into a different type of movie when I went into this. The, the box and the trailer make this out to be like a high-stakes thriller. Like a, high, like a crime like thriller. Like an action thriller, yeah. How like much, Minority uh, okay, Report-esque. How, how, much are we, how much do you want to give away? I don't well, know what's on the back of the box. I mean, like, it's almost impossible to talk about a lot of this movie. We're going to get into spoilers. Okay. It, let me let me get through some stuff, and then, okay. yeah, because we, we have to talk about some things. Yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise, there's almost nothing to say. Right, right. So this, is, this movie is definitely a mystery. It's a puzzle. I think a pretty interesting one. Um, the tagline for this movie should have been one of the lines of dialogue featured in the, in the trailer, which is, what if I could put him in front of you, the man who ruined your life, if I guaranteed you'd get away with it, would you kill him? That's that's the question that's kind of at the heart of this movie. That should be on the front of the box. Yes. It's, uh, it's a thought-provoking question. Um, and as we just discussed, this is one of those movies that's better experienced if you know as little as possible going in. Um, but, yeah, I, I think we can say, before we get into spoilers, that this does raise some interesting questions about – Interacting with a former version of yourself, it tackles the the topic of identity in an interesting way. Um, the intricacies of time travel are not at all the focus of this movie. They're somewhat glossed over. Um, but what I did find interesting was that uh, the notion of the notion that time travel was invented, uh, according to this movie, it happened in 1981. Which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be surprised if that that was true and maybe we just don't know about it uh it would definitely be a secret it would still be a secret yeah uh the top for us for us yeah (laughs) the the time travel machine uh in this film lives inside a violin case which is meant to look like conspicuous uh to people from the past it's certainly not a delorean but then again who's to say what a time time machine should look like i thought that was a pretty cool thing i I did too that worked yeah yeah um so why did i choose this like i said a moment ago not a movie that i thought i'd be getting um and, you know, I, I I compared it to Minority Report in the way it's pitched. I think that it has some interesting parallels with Minority Report uh, in a small way, uh, just in terms of, like, preventing th- – going back in time to prevent things from happening that could be bad. Um, this is definitely more of a think piece than an action flick. Uh, casting's really great. Like I said, uh, you have to cast a very particular actor to play the role that Sarah Snook does. And she really nails it. Um, and and before we get into spoilers, last thing I'll say is this is another one of those movies like Surviving the Game and Hard Target that deals with this idea of taking a person who has no real connection to society <laughs> yeah. and asking them to do a very unusual task. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, uh, let's get in. Let's get into spoiler territory. So if 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 you want to go in blind, and you should. Get out now. Uh, but th- there are some things to discuss. Yeah, for um, sure. I, th- this movie has constructed a set of characters and circumstances that allow the main character uh, to fall in love with themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that is a wild, wild topic that I personally don't know how to unpack. But I think that it's interesting to I, think about. I don't about. know. Like it, it, it does, and it doesn't make it seem like – that should be like like a question, you know. I, I I there's definitely there's definitely like a two plus hour cut of this movie. Yes, you could see that in the way in the way the movie was made. I think they definitely made the right choice in in making it ninety whatever minutes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, they're like it was just like they're just like at the end of the movie, just like yeah, that's just like 
Yeah, there it is. I, now you know the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like, that's, yeah, I'm in love with a younger version of myself. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing weird about that. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> right. right. The movie isn't interested in uh, unpacking it. It's really just yeah. like, and here it is. And my future is as a, a schizophrenic maniac. Right. Right. Also, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those two things aren't connected. Anyway, <laughs> end, end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely needed to <laughs> sit down and, and think about this one for a yeah. little bit. Um, and, and, uh, and it does... It throws quite a few twists at you, yeah. um, more so than exists in the original book, um, and perhaps one too many. But it's still—I mean, it all fits together. It it's does. Like, it's a you know, I I I feel like the the reveal at the end was obvious, like way before. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I thought they were just going to end it as in like it wasn't quite text, but it was just kind of like understood, like that, like that yeah. he was. He was both characters. He was his own mother and his own father <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> at yeah. the same time. And they were just going to, like, make it, quote, unquote, ambiguous. But then we would all know. Right. But no, then, then at the end, they're just like, it's a surprise. And I was like, all right, OK, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they didn't make it seem like that was a weird thing. Right. <laughs> Which it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and also, like, did he have other jobs to do? With, like, this is all he was doing, right? I believe so. Like, his entire life is to exist to create himself and then destroy himself and et cetera. Like he only does it once too. Like he's not doing it over and over again. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. So his only purpose is to become the the terrorist at the end of the movie so that the time travel institute can exist. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, because, you know, they really don't spend a lot of time explaining the time travel uh -huh. bureau or whatever it is that employs him. And, at, at, you know, as I'm watching this, I'm thinking – but I'd like to know more about that. What uh, what else are they doing? That's in the the two hour cut, <laughs> probably. Yeah, but you know, I think that also if you reveal that, then it spoils the fact that yeah, it's really just it's really just about him. And yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just a love story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, critical response for this was pretty positive. It nets out as an, at an eighty four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, three point six average on Letterbox. A lot of praise was heaped, appropriately so, on Sarah Snook's performance. Um, one review that I liked from Letterboxd was uh, from the user Austin, who gave this four stars. He said of Predestination, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, with that, uh, give it a shot. It's going on the shelf as my first pick for time travel. And, uh, yeah, if you like Ethan Hawke like I do, um, another solid entry. Yeah, it's, it's worth checking out. It's, uh, it, it, it's not – my favorite time travel movie. I definitely <laughs> thought it was pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a, it's fun. Good. Uh, the guy Noah Taylor who plays the the I don't know even know what his role is at the at the time travel place. Yes. Uh, he played he played Hitler in the Preacher TV series. Oh, did he? That's based on the comic book. Okay. Um, and it is like. I knew I recognized him from somewhere, and I had to had to look it up. And uh, it is a crazy performance. Uh, he makes he somehow makes Hitler a sympathetic character. Good grief! Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it, he actually plays Hitler who lives in hell. Whatever, it's okay, the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's a crazy performance. He's great at it. Uh, check it out if you're <laughs> in the TV section of the store. For sure. I mean, he's got a relatively small part in this. He's fine, uh, but yeah, that that piques my curiosity. He's so. a very interesting uh, way about him. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very. Yeah. He also looks like a guy who could play Hitler. Yeah. Maybe it's because he has a little tiny mustache in this, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just born with that face. Yeah. All right. I'm going to jump to 2020 to a movie called Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes. This is a Japanese one-take, micro-budget, time-travel, sci-fi comedy. Yes. Uh, here's the back <laughs> of the box. A cafe owner discovers that the TV in his cafe suddenly shows images from the future, but only two minutes into the future. Uh, tagline just tells you what the movie is. A one-take time travel sci-fi comedy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually not totally accurate to say that he has a TV that sees two minutes into the future. Because Fair. he has a set 
of two TVs slash computer monitors uh, that are on opposite ends of a so-called wormhole disturbance. So one monitor can see from the webcam of the other monitor two minutes into the past. The other one can see from the web webcam of the other two minutes into the future. Yes. And so it's not as simple as just like having a view into the future. Right. Um, which actually gets into the one, one of the more interesting aspects of uh, the time traveling in this movie because it's, it is playing with that idea of, of essentially what we talked about earlier is the past, the present, and the future are all happening at the same time. Yes. We only, we only perceive it moving in one direction because like the Big Bang acts as this like anchor point. And so like because of that, we think like – this direction is forward and this direction is backward, but it's all it's all it's all the same, you know. Yep. So it's like there's no such thing as up and down if you're not like on a planet. So the two sides of this wormhole video connection give the impression that there's like a past and a future, and like we're living in the present, and these other two things are 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 different. But I think because because of the one take aspect to this, it kind of strengthens that idea of like there's only one thing happening, but there's also a past and a future. Yes. Right. In addition to the present. So like we and we never change perspective. We have that one camera point of view. And so like that's the quote present. But it's not like they don't run into like the future version of themselves running up and down the stairs. No. But this is why I felt dumber after (laughs) this experience (laughs) watching movies for the scene, because it it, your brain starts to short circuit after a little while. And uh, that was definitely happening to me. But everything you're saying is accurate. I think it's best to just, like, give into it. Yeah, let it happen. Just let it wash over you. Because there's nothing about it that that's, like, hard. When you, it's, it's Nothing about it is, like, they don't, like, push anything to where it's like, wait a second, what? Yeah. You know, it's just more just, like, it's more the layers of it that, yeah. make, it, that make it complex. Because, mm-hmm. like, you totally understand, like, okay, that's the future, that's the past. And, and then when they're like, well, then here's another one and here's another one and here's another one. Then it's like, now it's confusing. But really only for the people making the movie, I think. I think for us, we're just like, yeah, we get it. It's the future. Well, you you touched on two interesting things there. One is that, um, you know, when you Mm -hmm. you described this movie to me, I was trying to imagine how you could turn that idea into, you know, a hour and ten minute movie. And I I was – Incredibly surprised by yeah. how they did. And, uh, you know, it expands beyond two minutes in a very interesting way. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you teed up the idea that kind of building this out and planning it uh, is a monumental task, especially because of the fact that this is a one take movie. I mean, it, it, yeah. it's, I, I, I would love to know how they did some of this stuff. Yeah, a lot, a lot of planning, I'm sure. A lot, yeah. Uh, but speaking of planning, like, the, the time travel in this movie, uh, it, it kind of shows how it gives the illusion of control, you know, because we talked about like, oh, would you want to go back and travel through time? It's like, yeah, I can control. I can if I did, I'd want to like change this and whatever. But like that never is how it works. No. Um, and like just like in this movie, like every other time travel movie, it's it spins out of control. And here it happens really fast, you know? Yes. Uh, it's a single shot, real time movie that's 71 minutes long. So like there's no time to like dilly dally. Uh, within minutes, our characters are finding out how these, t- these TVs work. And then like they're just chasing their own tails immediately. Yes. You know, they think it's because like, oh, they we're going to use this to our advantage. Right. Uh, and none of it's working out, but they're like, like, well, we got to do this, like, just to make sure, just to keep this tool available to us. I think you could make this without it being one cut, but it's so much better because it is one cut. <clears throat> I think it, yeah, I think it, it, it yeah, it could have worked, but the one cut of it, like, really helps the narrative of it. Yeah, you know, I I did a little digging, and I think this was inspired by the... Korean film One Cut of the Dead, which yeah. also does a one cut mm-hmm. thing. Um, and I think that's kind of become an interesting challenge for some filmmakers and uh, different directors pull it off to varying degrees of success. It really works here. Yeah, it works. It works because because of the way the, the, the time travel is working. Mm-hmm. It's not a it's not a gimmick. I mean, it's a gimmick. It's also a cheap way to make a movie. They shot it on an iPhone. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
you know, it, it, it like like we like I was saying before, like it, it holds you into that so-called present, and while these other futures and pasts are happening at the same time. And I think if you had a cut where it, you know, you you change perspective or go to a different character, I think that would kind of like create that little imbalance there that wouldn't necessarily hold you in place. This is one of those movies that after you're done, you just want to talk to somebody about it and you want someone else to see it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I yeah. really hope that our customers pick this one up because it's it's such a joy to watch. It's, yeah, it's just fun. The actors are likable. Yeah. Um, they're all very idiosyncratic. Yeah. They all have kind of like a very unique face or something like some like way they act or, or smile or something that gives them the look about them. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's kind of like it's also like it's a little tiny adventure movie. You know, if you yeah. had an adventure without leaving your house, kind of. You know, um, yep. it's just a very lighthearted romp through time. Uh, you know, two minutes in either direction. It's like, like I said, it's a little bit of a gimmick, but it, it fits the story. Um, I think it definitely belongs on the shelf for time travel. I agree, and you know, uh, this is this is a subtitled movie. It's a foreign film, but uh, I'm always impressed when. Foreign films can can still make me laugh, and this one does. Mm-hmm. You know, it is it's built as a comedy. Yeah. It is a comedy. It, it, it works. <laughs> yeah, and then in the end, the time police show up. You know, <laughs> with funny haircuts and stuff. Like, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, um, great. Well, I'm glad you put it up there. It's a uh, it's a fun choice. It's not one that was on my radar at all. So uh, I'm grateful that I was introduced to it. All right. Well, from there, I'm going to take us back to 2004 my first or rather my second pick is uh whoa (laughs) which direction (laughs) are we we doing (laughs) yeah uh my second pick is primer so back to the box synopsis here friends and fledgling entrepreneurs invent a device in their garage which reduces the apparent mass of any object placed inside it but they discover that it has some highly unexpected capabilities Ones that could enable them to do and to have seeming and to have seemingly anything they want. Taking advantage of this unique opportunity is the first challenge they face. Dealing with the consequences is the next. Tagline here: What happens if it actually works? Which is a great tagline. Yeah. <laughs> compared to predestination, <laughs> yes. which has a horrible one. What what if it, what happens if it actually works? I like that. Um, so this is a movie that does something bad things. <laughs> <laughs> bad things. Um, this this does something different than a lot of time travel films. It makes the discovery of time travel, I think, feel somewhat practical, even small, uh, which is not how a lot of movies or stories handle the idea of time travel. I love. I just love the idea of like some guy figuring it out in his garage. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of probably how it would work. Yes, exactly. And for for the first iteration of it to be. Uh, rather minuscule in how yeah. you know far you can go with time travel. Um, I remember seeing this when it came out. In fact, I think I did actually see it in theaters. M- my feeling upon leaving the theater was not unlike Austin's review of Pre- Predestination, which was just like, "What? <laughs> it's it, this is a this is a dense movie. It's it feels kind of like it's in the hard sci-fi category. It's not in any." In no way it cares if you understand what's going on. No. In the sense of the time travel. No, it doesn't care at all. Yeah. Um, this... Or I think it does, but it's not trying in the movie to tell you. How. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> it's not right. not really necessarily to try to get that information across. It isn't. Yeah, and we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But I, this comes to us by way of Shane Carruth. Uh, he wrote, directed, and stars in this. Uh, this film was made on a budget of $7,000. It at times feels that way. Yeah. Um, but – you know, Carruth's goal was to portray time travel in a grounded type of way, which I think he accomplishes if your definition of time of grounded uh, is time travel where there aren't high stakes and, you know, escapades throughout, you yeah. know, the past and the present and the future to save humanity. Um, like I said, or like we just talked about, this is kind of hard sci-fi. It, it's not afraid to go over the average person's head with technical details. Um it's also shot kind of docu style. Uh, you, mm. you have it's there's like a fly on the wall feeling to uh, watching a lot of this unfold. I've just, yeah, I've noticed that like a lot of our movies tonight are uh, you know very low budget, and this is one of those movies. I think because time travel is like one of those things that yeah, uh, it's a non horror thing that you can throw in a movie that like makes it marketable without mm-hmm. spending any money. 
Exactly. Um, yeah, this, you know, I think the the docu-style approach works well with the director's more grounded approach to telling a sci-fi story. Um, and, yeah, again, to that point, this is definitely just a movie where people are talking to one another. Uh, <laughs> you know, the tension comes from there's this. some yelling. There's some yelling. Yeah, a little bit of wrestling. <laughs> just a little bit, though. <laughs> Um, the tension comes from the situation they find themselves in and the friction between the two main characters uh, but it demands that you pay attention like you can't expect to read a text message while this movie is on and <laughs> I, mean, no, I, I think watching this movie once is hard, makes it hard to figure out which, yes. I think you have to see it at least, at least a second time or ask somebody or look it up on the internet totally yes um, yeah but I, you know I think if you if if you feel like watching a movie where Two smart people discover time travel and deal with the consequences. Um, you, you, get, you get a pretty interesting ride with with this, and and the consequences actually get to why I chose this. Um, even though this movie attempts you attempts to blind you with the science related to how the time machine works, how it was built, it gets really real when these two guys have to grapple with the idea of time travel and what they want to do with it once they discover it. Uh, their time travel machine only allows them to go back in time by a few hours. Uh, so naturally, like the first thing that they decide is like, well, let's make some money. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they buy stocks and, uh, and you know, they know the stocks are going to perform well. So uh, they get richer off of that. Um, we also just get to see them discuss some pretty entertaining things that I think real people would talk about if they discovered time travel. Like, you know, what would you do? What's right? What's wrong? What's going to come of these these decisions? And also just like, uh, you know, if my cell phone rings, yeah. is it also ringing for like the other version of myself that exists in this time? Um, yeah. So the two the two main characters have pretty different attitudes on how to leverage their discovery. That's what you know. It's great. Like I don't know. I don't remember if they address this at all in the movie. I don't think they do. But you know, the 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 patent. Whatever the technology involved that creates this would make you so wealthy beyond your oh, yeah. wildest imagination. Like, why are you why are you trying to day trade? Right. <laughs> you <laughs> yes, know what I mean? Yes, and yes. like, you don't even like even like you could sell the technology as is and become a billionaire. Right. Oh, yeah. And it might not ever get better than it is. Like, it might not even work that great. Like, what are these guys trying to do? This this movie reminds me of Uncut Gems. It's just like, guys, guys, oh, yeah. guys, slow the fuck down. <laughs> yes. You have a time machine. But you know what? To that point, I think that, you know, they're obviously thinking very critically about how what, – what the consequences are of, yeah. of this discovery. And I could believe that if I were one of these guys, the idea of selling it to the government or, like, making it more widely available means that – Stupider people are going to do something bad with it, and that <laughs> I mean, would frighten me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but if you really cared, you would destroy it. Right, right, and right. that that's that is flirted with in this. Uh, like you can't, for, you would never pursue it in the first place if you right. really cared about that. Right, and they did, and you know, I I don't think they were trying to discover it. Like they, I think they were building this thing, not really knowing what it did, and then figured yeah. out, oh, this could take me back in time. But, but if you're like, hey, this is a way to make money, like I can tell you how to make a lot of money. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> like talk to somebody on Wall Street for five minutes. Literally anyone. Billionaire in yes, no time. Yes, yes. Um, I like that there's some pretty uh, – I like that there's some unexplainable side effects uh, to time travel that these guys experience. You know, it affects their body. Ears are bleeding. Their handwriting changes. And we don't – know why, but it helps to establish this notion that time travel is really not something we should fuck with yeah. <laughs> for whatever reason. This is also a, a, a different kind of time travel than we really have ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there, these these guys are actually almost like photocopies of themselves on, in some sense. Yeah, they can only go in one direction. They can only go back. And so inevitably, they're going to run into copies of themselves from just a few hours right. in a different time period. Um as we already discussed, because this is such low budget, it, it does feel a little bit student filmish at times. But, you know, I, I don't mind it because I think the scrappiness with which this was made mirrors the scrappiness which, with which time travel was invented in, in the mm -hmm. story. So I think it works. Um, critical response was positive. This has a 72% on Rotten Tomatoes. Also sits at a 3.6 on Letterboxd. 
Um, I actually found a review from Chuck Klosterman that I really liked oh, uh, nice. of this. Yeah, so uh, he did an essay, which I'd love to read on time travel films. And of Primer, he said, Primer is hopelessly confusing and grows more and more Byzantine as it unravels. I've watched it seven or eight times. I still don't know what happened. It's the finest time travel movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, ultimately, Klosterman says that the lesson of Primer uh, regarding time travel is that it's too important to use only for money, but too dangerous for anything else. <laughs> Which, I mean, I, I mean good you know, point. hard to argue. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this has been a favorite of mine for a while. I think Shane Carruth is an interesting filmmaker, um, and this was his first film. So uh, it fits this scene perfectly. I'm throwing it on the shelf for time travel. Doesn't – isn't the idea the, – the idea of it coming together, doesn't it, doesn't it work if, like, the one guy used it before the movie started, isn't that yes. the idea? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Because they, otherwise, it doesn't. It, nothing. It doesn't add up. No, it doesn't. Yeah, you, you, they're they're kind of piecing together what they've built and plotting out their first use of it, and then they see a version of themselves already doing something out in in the wild. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, it it but like the first guy did it before he told the other guy, right? Um, right. And I think is that is that's the only way apparently I think that it really works. But I don't know. I, mean, I haven't actually like worked it out on paper, but it's a fun movie. Well, to the point of working it out on paper, if you go to Wikipedia and you really want to understand how this works, somebody has diagrammed uh, oh. what they what they do, and that that helps a <laughs> it helps a little bit. Yeah. But it's still it's still a tough one to unravel. <laughs> Probably makes it more confusing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to take us in a de decidedly less confusing direction. I'm going to take us to the year of 1982, mm. one year after time travel was invented, apparently. Apparently, yeah. And boy, what did, did they do some amazing things with it once, yeah. they, <laughs> once they had it, <laughs> according to your film. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> this movie is called Time Rider, The Adventure of Lyle Swan. That's right, singular adventure, just one. Just one. Just one. <laughs> Uh, Fred Ward plays a motocross driver uh, racing in a, a, a race in the Baja 100, they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, and he <laughs> goes past a time machine and travels back in time. Yeah, and that's literally how it – I mean like the, the government is is building this thing and he just – Well, we don't know that it's a it's the government. I, that's fair. I, I'm not sure. That's fair. I don't remember. Somebody is building this, but Some, they haven't put a fence around it. They, they have not put a fence around it. They're trying to shoot a monkey back into into the past, and they're just like, oh, let's do it out in the desert. Who could, who could possibly drive by? We're – 600 yards away from a motorcycle race. Well, Fred Ward is, is the answer to that question. <laughs> Here's the back of the box. A maverick motorbike racer wanders into a top-secret time travel research test site, which unintentionally teleports him to the mid-1800s and ends up having to fight violent outlaws for his survival. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sound like the test site had to fight the outlaws. Oh, right, it sure does. <laughs> uh, the tagline, it's very long. It's a description of the movie. <laughs> Lyle Swan is a champion off-road racer, but to the people of 1877, he's something very, very different. Accurate. Uh, I like to point out that 1877 is not the mid-1800s. <laughs> Well, no, it's Which late is what the back of the box says. <laughs> right, right. So the front of the box is different from the back of the box. Uh, anyway, that's pretty indicative of where we're going with this movie. Yeah, right, right, right. It's also true of most of the people that write the backs of the boxes for our, for our films are just phoning it in. I mean, this has happened more I, I, than once. They don't watch the movie. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's pretty obvious. So they're not paying very close attention. Right. Uh, the first credit we see on screen is Michael... Uh, Naismith presents. He was the guitarist for the for the monkeys. Right. Now they might have been a fake group, <laughs> uh, but I always thought that they were a pretty good <laughs> pop rock like '60s band. We might differ on that, but <laughs> I thought they had a lot of good songs. I mean, I don't know. I like like their top like ten songs. I'll go to bat for. Interesting. I agree that they had a lot of songs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, maybe we'll agree to disagree. They, they sold seventy-five million albums. Yeah, can it, you believe what that means? <laughs> like, it's a lot of it's a lot of records. <laughs> seventy-five million albums. Uh, in addition to uh, being in the Monkeys, 
Uh, Michael Naismith, uh, his mom invented liquid paper in the 50s. No shit. Which was the first of the, the, the white out liquid paper. All the, uh, she invented that. Hmm. Um, and so like she was working as like a secretary or an accountant in some like office and she and she came up with this thing and then they were like, you know, next thing you know, they're millionaires. Um, but he produced this movie. He co-wrote the script. Uh, he also wrote, produced and uh, and did all the music uh, for the <laughs> for the movie. Feels um, like it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, none of the music is amazing. No. But, um, <laughs> it's a little boilerplate at times, but it's also like, I don't know, it's kind of like cool in like a, you know, in a in an off off the mark way, you know? Yes. Um, it's like a synthy guitar jazz thing going on. Right. Um, but this is definitely a passion project for, the, <laughs> for Michael Naismith. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's hard to say exactly what kind, what the passion was, um, but like the first fifteen to twenty minutes of this movie are spent watching Fred Ward's stunt double drive around in the desert on a motorcycle. Right, and and drive around on a motorcycle quite well. Uh, yeah. he, I'm convinced that this character is an accomplished motorcycle yes. rider, and he's and we're all, we're jamming out to the soundtrack Love too. It. It's yeah. going on. It is literally going on for fifteen or twenty minutes. <laughs> yes. Um, which seems like maybe that was a big reason the movie was made in the first place. You know, mm-hmm. Naismith was like, yeah, I've got this music. Like, wouldn't it be cool if, like, this guy was on a motorcycle? Um, it's not the – again, it's not the most amazing motorcycle rising, but it's not bad. It's fun to watch. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's definitely, like a, like, a rad uh, bit to this movie. You know, it has, like, a, a little bit of a rad quality. Um, it's not quite as slapdash as rad. No. Which is why I think it's not quite as fun to watch. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. Um, obviously, this isn't what I would call a good movie. <laughs> uh, it's got, it's a little bit like a movie of the week. Yeah. Um, it's pretty low budget. Fred Ward's cool. I mean, Tremors. T- totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, the characters in this are, like, really only okay. You know? Like, there's no, no one to really connect to. Right. Um, and, like, the main storyline of this movie... Uh, and the time travel part of the plot are like not connected whatsoever. <laughs> um, yeah, so like this is really just kind of like a fish out of water movie. It's funny that you say that because this for me raised a question which I had never asked before, which is what is the first thing you do if you go back in time? Mm-hmm. And uh, for Fred Ward, the answer is take my clothes off and go swimming. <laughs> 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 okay, well, okay, that actually is – that brings me to my main point about this movie. Okay. And the main reason I picked it. Yeah. Um, I think that this is, the only, this is the only time travel movie I can think of in which not only the protagonist, but pretty much all the characters we spend time with <laughs> are completely oblivious to the fact that time travel has even happened. Oh yeah, the guy the guy who time traveled has no idea he's time traveled. The people he's around are have no idea that he's from the future. Right. Um, for for all they know, he's just like he's from a city in America that has fancier clothes and better motorbikes. Right. Because <laughs> like, right, right, right. like mo- those motorcycles di- obviously did not exist in 1877, but. It's not like so out of the realm of possibility that that these people are like, oh, my God, the aliens have landed. You know, they're just like, holy shit. Like, I didn't know we were doing that now. Right. Well, it's funny because they compare, you know, they describe it as a machine. And at some point it's compared to like a horse. Yeah. And it's like, well, they had bikes. Like yes. bicycles, yes. why not compare it to cars, a bicycle? Right? The cars existed, right? I don't think so. No? Cars okay. weren't there yet, but bikes were. Bikes, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so like, yeah, so like we're, I mean, I don't know. We're getting there. Like train, yeah. trains existed. Sure. So like, you know, anyway, so the, the, <laughs> so they weren't like, they weren't, they weren't like, oh my God, this is like the most, fu-. they were like, oh, this, this guy is from a weird part of America or something, right? Right, right. Um, And so like the time travel story is, is mainly happening in the background. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think there's a lot of movies where, like, about time travel where, like, nobody in the movie knows that there's time travel happening. (laughs) (laughs) So it makes it unique in that sense, I think. It does. It does. Um, And then at the end, when the helicopter shows up to take Fred Ward away, we learn that he's his own own great, great, whatever, grandfather. Grandfather, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) And they just kind of throw that in at the end and like, oh, yeah, by the way, I fucked my grandma. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> so, Time Rider. It's a uh, it's a silly time traveling motorcycle movie. Uh, the cheesiness is part of its charm. Uh, there's some pretty cool motorcycle riding. A red a red motorcycle outfit. Fred Ward is Fred Ward. Oh yeah. The music is kind of groovy, um, and I think it's a kind of a unique angle on time travel and the, the grandfather paradox. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for – in the store, looking for movies about time travel, check out the staff recommendation shelf. It's up there. You know, fundamentally, I, I think there's a pretty simple story here, and it makes me wonder if the original script for this was a little bit more uh, – a little less outlandish uh, – and then perhaps the studio was like, yeah, we'll make this. we got to punch it up. we got to make this guy a motorcycle rider. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. I, to me, I f- really feel like this was like Michael Naismith, Naismith going like, all right, man, like, imagine this guy who's like a, he's like a cool motorcycle dude who travels back in time and he's like a cowboy, but he's got a motorcycle. And like, and then I'm gonna write some cool songs, <laughs> right? Because right. because he, he's living in like California in the sure. the 70s and like playing his music, and he's yeah. living on his monkeys and liquid paper money. It's going like, wouldn't this be cool? He's out there on his motorcycle. That's what I think. If this if this is the script that he wrote and the studio had nothing to do with changing it, then there were definitely drugs involved with getting <laughs> us from page one to the. <laughs> I have a feeling because like he he co-wrote the script with the guy who directed the movie. I have a feeling that like his co-writing of it was like <laughs> just like cocktail napkins <laughs> yes. and like scribbles you know yes. and the guy was like all right I, I can throw something together with this i guess yeah, yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. did you find yourself thinking about heat vision and jack at all when you 100 uh... percent. okay good yeah. there's definitely <laughs> same, that vibe too i mean i would be very surprised if that wasn't an influence yes. in some way yes or this wasn't this wasn't an influence on that well, time travel movies can often be heavy, uh, mind-bending experiences, and this is not that. And I'm grateful for it. It was a, yeah. <laughs> it's a fun time. It's a nice palate cleanser. It is. It if is. You, yeah, if you want to like throw something on for the family on Saturday afternoon, it's it's a good choice. Indeed. Well, that brings me to our final pick for the evening, and it is the 1962 movie La Jetée. Back of the box synopsis for this one: Time travel. Still images, a past, present, and future in the aftermath of World War III. The tale of a man, a slave, sent back and forth in and out of time to find a solution to the world's fate, to replenish its decreasing stocks of food, medicine, and and energies, and in doing so, resulting in a perpetual memory of a lone female, life, death, and past events that are recreated on an airport's viewing pier. There's no tagline for this. Predates taglines, I think. Yeah. Um, So this is a pretty unconventional film. Um, Not only is it told entirely with still images, the runtime is a mere 28 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) It's not entirely still images. It's not. It's not. There is one. There are two shots, actually. Oh, are there? The one you're thinking of, it's actually right before that. Oh. When she's laying in bed. Yeah. There's There's two different shots that uh, that are actual... uh, Film shots. Oh, fascinating! Yeah. I only caught one, but I have time to the go back one, and rewatch it. The first this. one, it was hard to tell because it was like, was it just too? You know, I wasn't sure they were going there. Right. Then they did. <laughs> they did. Um, and it, it, and like you said, it's a twenty-eight-minute movie. I just want to point out to the customers: this is not a full rental fee. It's half price. <laughs> <laughs> we don't expect you to pay full price for a twenty-eight-minute movie. Oh, that's great. That's why people love rewinding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're a big hit in the neighborhood. Well, you know, it's funny you bring up the the scenes that are actually motion pictures because um, there's a reason for that. The The director could actually only afford a videographer for an afternoon. <laughs> That's all he got. I think, you know, I mean, he probably wanted to make a motion picture, but uh, right. just could not afford it. Um, but yeah, like we said, this is this is 28 minutes. You could watch La Jete three times back to back combined. It would still be under 85 minutes. So um, I... Don't know why I didn't bring this to the shelf for that theme. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this was uh, this is a French film directed by Chris Marker. Um, while I'm not sure how many of our customers have seen this, uh, anyone who has seen Terry Gilliam's 12 Monkeys will recognize some of the imagery that's uh, on display here. Le Jeté was an inspiration for that film. Yeah. Um, there's no dialogue. Uh, this film is entirely narrated, which I'm not usually a fan of narration, but... 
I do love how this comes together. It's pretty poetic. Um, and, you know, as I... S- it's not narration, like, subbing in for something. Right. This is like narration is definitely part of the the story that we're, Indeed. we're getting here. Indeed. And, you know, I think it helps to pack uh, quite a bit of s- storytelling in that 20 minutes or 28 minutes. So wh- why did I choose this? I love that this rolls a lot of the themes of time travel into one story. It's about romance. It's about traveling through time to solve problems in the present. It deals with encountering yourself in another time. Uh, It's also about how people reconcile the consequences of manipulating time. Um, It's beautifully shot. For for a movie that's entirely still images, uh, I don't look back on this and feel like I remember static images. At least in my experience, recalling this movie feels like I saw something (coughs) that was in motion. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of that just comes from how the images are shot and how they're cut together. It feels like you're moving through a scene. And, uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing. Um, ultimately, the, this is about the fact that a person cannot escape from their own time. There's no getting away from the present. Um, and, you know, while a lot of time travel movies do tend to cause my brain to short circuit – uh, this one doesn't. It, it's actually a pretty simple story. And while some of what transpires might feel familiar to anyone who is who enjoys a good time travel story, this one did it first. You know, a lot of the movies that have come since since this um, play with a lot of what yeah. you get here. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this was this I'm just was glad very he wasn't his, his own father or something. You know? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so. In terms of reception, this this is pretty renowned. It's it's on a lot of lists of movies to see before you die or greatest sci-fi films ever made. And you have time to do it. You've got time. Yeah. It's very short. <laughs> it is. It sits at a 4.3 on Letterboxd. Uh, I enjoyed the user Armaya's review of this, which reads, the best PowerPoint in the world. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I actually wondered. I was like, maybe were these pictures just sitting around and he decided <laughs> to make a movie? Yeah, no. He indeed shot it. Um, and, and yeah, you know, this is one of those movies that uh, made quite a long time ago and deals in visiting the future. And I think that uh, they pull it off without it feeling just completely wrong. I mean, they're, they're very – spare and sparse in yes. how they depict the future. But, um, yeah, it, it feels decidedly different from the past and the present. Um, but it's also – they do a good job of, like, being like, eh, it's not that different. <laughs> right, you know? right. Like, it looks a little weird. Yeah. Things have been rebuilt. There's a lot more streets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's a uh, it's a classic for a good reason. Um, and, uh, and I'm throwing it on the shelf. Uh Add it to your basket as you're picking up any of these other five films. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a fun one to check out. Did you enjoy it? I had did you enjoy seen it. Yeah. yeah. I had not seen it before. This is my first – I'd never heard of it before actually. It was, uh, it was on my radar. It, it's a Criterion Collection film. So I, I was familiar with it from that. But um, one of my favorite bands, Tortoise, also has a song that is named for this and is apparently inspired by the film. So – yeah, it, 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 this was kind of on my radar, but uh, I was very late to the game to to see it. But um, yeah, I think it's a fine entry for time travel. So for up sure. it goes. Well, listen, that does it for this week's episode. As always, thanks for paying a visit to Rewind Video. This week, the staff recommendation shelf is stocked with six films that take us to the past, the present, the future, and back again. And the films we chose are Run, Lola, Run, Predestination, Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes, Primer, Time Rider, and La Jete. You should go to rewindvideopod.com to get on our mailing list, and you can also find our socials there. And if you enjoy the show, be kind. Recommend it to a friend. That does it for this week's episode. Next time, tune in as we pack up a knapsack and head into the woods. Uh, I don't like sleeping outside. <laughs> Well, as always, we'll have six movies to recommend, but of course, we're also interested in what you think, so don't hesitate to hit us up on social. In the meantime, stop at the counter for a movie to watch, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.